Hi, I'm Anthony Ha from TechCrunch, and I'm here in the offices of Electric Objects with Jake Levine, the founder and CEO. Uh, thanks for having us, Jake. Thanks for being here. And uh, maybe the best way to start out is just, Jake, could you just tell us a little bit about what Electric Objects is? Sure. So, um, so Electric Objects is a new kind of computer. Uh, it's a computer that's meant for your wall. Um, it's meant to fade into the background. It's not meant to distract you or absorb you in the same way that the computers um, you know, uh, or our laptops or our, our tablets or our phones um, typically do. Uh, it's, meant to, it's meant to display artwork mm -hmm. from the internet. And so that means static images, but it also means animations. It means visualizations. It means all these beautiful objects that are um, currently online but trapped inside devices that don't really do them justice. Right. Why do we need you know, separate screens and monitors for that as opposed to like, OK, great, I'm just going to put like an iPad or a monitor yeah. on my wall that I have already? Very good. Very good question. So um, one of the defining characteristics of, of art, when we think about art, um, is its persistence and its permanence um, in our home. And so if you think about a relationship that we have to, um, to a painting or a photograph that hangs on our wall, um, it's, it's a persistent one. Um, and it's a quiet one. And it sort of lives in the background. And it doesn't demand your attention or absorb you. And so um, the, the, the devices that we use to access the internet, our tablets, our laptops, our phones, our computers, they're designed not for contemplation, not to live in the background, not to be quiet or still, but to demand your attention and absorb you. Mm -hmm. um, and, so, uh, and so this is about creating a dedicated space in the home for what we think is worthy, for the, for the, for the kind of object that we think is worthy of that space. So what I'm going to demo now is, uh, is how you control what appears in your screen. What you're looking at here is, uh, is the electric objects application. Um, we have a web and mobile application. This is uh, all of the artwork um, in the current uh, and the current sort of version of the application has been uploaded um, or contributed by um, about 100 users that have been using the prototype over the last um, six to nine months or so. Um, there's two actions you can take on every photo. You can collect it, um, add it to your collection, sort of like a save for later, um, or you can hit display, which sends it to your screen. Now, some users um, live with a piece for uh, an hour. Some users live with it for a few days. Some, some users live with it for months. So there's three ways that users can bring art objects from the internet to their wall. Um, users can add it via URL. They can upload it from their computer. Or they can use one of our tools, like the Chrome extension, to bring work from websites like Tumblr directly to their screen. So this is one of my favorite ways to get, uh, to get art onto the screen. So, um, so here I am surfing through my Tumblr dashboard. Um, I find an image uh, that I really like or an animated GIF. Um, I hit Collect, which appears above the image. I type in the title and artist name. I hit Submit. And now when I visit Electric Objects, I can hit Display on that image. And it appears on my wall. So we have support for um, static images. Uh, as I mentioned, we support animated GIFs as well. Um, and, uh, and we actually just recently um, got some JavaScript web-based visualizations running on the screen. Um, which I can't demo from this application, um, but we have support for most of the major JavaScript um, programming languages, which we're excited about. And then on the device side, I mean, is the screen pretty much what the screen is going to look like? Yeah, so this is, this is the screen that we're going to Kickstarter with. Okay. Um, and so, uh, so next Tuesday, July 8th, um, you'll be able to uh, pre-order one of these screens through the Kickstarter campaign. How did you settle on the dimensions that you have right now? You mean the aspect ratio? The, the aspect ratio, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so one of, the, one of our sort of guiding principles is that we wanted to make sure that this product was affordable. So much of the art world is inaccessible to people like me, um, to the rest of the team, mm -hmm. um, to most people in the world. Uh, and so we wanted to make a product that, um, that celebrated art, that gave people the confidence to, um, to, uh, to think about work and to enjoy artwork. Um, but that didn't uh, put a hole in their, in their budget, a significant hole. So this will be priced at $299. And, and, and a big reason for that is, um, is that we're using displays uh, that are effectively, like we're basically picking off of existing large display manufacturer orders. Um, and so the 16 by 9 aspect ratio is the most common, uh, common available. Um, so the question then is, OK, so, so if we have to use a screen that everyone else is using, how do we make a device that doesn't feel like a computer, or that doesn't feel like right. a monitor? Um, and there are a couple things that we did. So the first thing that we did is we, is we turned it portrait. 
Um, and you don't really see uh, portrait monitors except on the desk of developers, but most people don't see those. Um, <laughs> and so what we're doing now is we're spending a lot of time working sp directly with artists to make work with the screen in mind. Um, in, in, from my perspective, that's the most interesting uh, sort of art objects that we can find for it. Something that sort of blends um, utility and, and sort of beauty or the traditional characteristics of artwork. So for example, um, one, of my, one of my favorite examples is um, the use of wind data or weather data to inform a piece of art on your wall um, or traffic patterns or um, you know, what you have going on that day on your calendar, right? Like imagine, imagine um, you know, art informed by the sort of massive range of APIs that are currently available on the web. Um, data sets that know who you are, data sets that know where you are, data sets that know things about your context, um, and art objects that can be informed by all of that really interesting data. Which brings me back to why we wanted to support JavaScript in the first place, web-based visualizations. And so um, we're, we're working with the founders of Processing. Um, we're making sure that we're supporting um, that programming language, which many visual artists use to create work, um, along with all of the major JavaScript frameworks. And you guys are launching a Kickstarter campaign. Can you talk a little bit about just why you're doing that? Yeah, of course. So, um, so a couple of reasons. Uh, so this is a hardware project. Um, it's, a, it's a hardware project. It's a software project, um, which means uh, it's expensive to build. Um, it's, uh, Kickstarter is, a, is an amazing platform to help de-risk the production process. In, in other words, like we'll know how many to order. Um, but it's also, and, and mostly, a community project. Um, and Kickstarter is, Kickstarter, the Kickstarter community occupies this sort of intersection of technology and, and art that we feel embodies uh, what we want to see out of this device, right? The kind of community that's going to define you know, what this product means for years to come. And so for us, it's about, it's about the crowdfunding sort of economic model, but it's also about tapping into a community that we think is going to like it and that, and that we want to sort of define the product.